Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, I am super excited about today's uh, show. Today we're going to be talking about TikTok ads with my sweet friend Dennis Yu. Now, let me tell you real quick, um, there's a lot of people talking about how Facebook ads are one getting way more expensive they're not performing as well especially since the ios whole debacle um you know with the um the updates um ads are not getting in front of our people as easily so if you are spending money on ads or if you have thought about spending money to market your business then you are in the right place because everybody's talking about how easy tiktok ads are and how much cheaper they are and how much more effective they are so if you have thought about, you know, spending money to get in front of your person, then um, today is going to be super value based to you. So as you guys are coming in, just tell me where in the world are you at today? Where are you joining us from? Uh, I, I know we have people coming in literally from all over the world. I'm so appreciative of all of you that are watching live or even on the replay or listening uh, at some point in time. Um, today, like all shows, we are giving, doing some giveaways and I'm excited about today's giveaways too, because again, this is such a hot topic and my friend Dennis Yu does have a brand new book, uh, the definitive guide to TikTok advertising, how to ac access 1 billion people in 10 minutes. So he co-authored this book with Perry Marshall. Um, um, so I'm going to be giving away two copies of this book today. Um, so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you uh, enter to win. OK, so how do you enter to win? Um, well, we have three core ways that we pick winners. One is share your aha moments in the comments down under. And that means an aha moment is like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that. Or, wow, I knew that, but I needed to hear it again. Sometimes those things come our way and we're like, yeah, I, I kind of knew that, but I needed to hear it. So those, that's what an aha moment is. Um, the second way you can win is, you know, tag someone that you think might get value from this. If you have a friend that's been talking about TikTok um, or you know that they would get value from it, tag them uh, or sprinkle it out into the world. Let's get as many people as we can in the know when it comes to TikTok ads. Um, ask questions. We love them. So we'll try to get as many questions as we possibly can answered. Uh, if not, we'll circle back at the uh, after the show is over and make sure those questions get answered. Um, as always, uh, we try to do show notes here so that you don't have to sit and take notes. All you have to do is really focus in on uh, learning, listening, and uh, soaking it all up. If you want the notes, all you have to do is drop notes in down under and we'll make sure you get those. We usually have them out within 24 hours or so. So let me tell you about my friend, Dennis Yu. I've known Dennis forever. We were just talking about how long we've known one another. Uh, we're kind of OGs, if you will. That just means we're like, we've been around a long time, but he's been building brands and teaching marketing for over 13 years. He specializes in helping young adults grow into leaders of tomorrow by confidently developing their marketing skills through training programs and seminars with enterprise clients like the Golden State Warriors, Nike and Rosetta Stone. He's co-authored The Definitive Guide to TikTok Advertising, How to Access a Billion People in 10 Minutes. Another thing that he's super passionate about is creating jobs. And he is on a mission to create 1 million jobs. And guess what? He's a fourth of the way there. So put your hands together for my friend, Dennis Yu. How have you been first, real quick? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm, I'm seeing the planet. I'm in India today and I'm going to go see the Taj Mahal in four hours. That is fabulous. I mean, fabulous. I, I am just a little bit jealous, I have to say. <laughs> so that's that's fabulous. Bucket list item. Well, I don't want to take up much of your time because I know sightseeing is way more fun than me picking your brain about TikTok ads. But um, mm -hmm. but I am fascinated by this whole TikTok um, space. And um, and so I thought it was and, and hopefully it'll give you value. I know you've got a book. And, you know, a lot of people are talking about ads, the fact that Facebook ads are no longer doing as well, blah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. so. So let's start there, actually. Um, as long as I've known you, I've known you for Facebook ads. 
And Mm -hmm. now you're doing TikTok ads. Are you still doing Facebook ads or have you just totally like, hey, they're no longer performing as well. TikTok's where it's at. I'm going to focus there. I do any kind of ads because the core strategy of ads is taking something that works and getting more out of it. Right. When you, uh, I mean, I've run Google ads for almost 20 years and then Facebook came along or, you know, YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, like we run ads on every single channel. The key thing to understand is that the algorithm wants to balance what the user has, you know, the user's experience versus what us as the advertisers want and driving leads and sales. So this shift to TikTok ads, I consider the next evolution of Facebook. So we were able to run Facebook ads and get away with having images and getting away with things that look obviously like ads. But then remember when Facebook in 2009 or so, they shifted to mobile, they bought Instagram, they integrated WhatsApp, unless the bar for engagement needed to be better, you know, things like Instagram stories, which are shorter. So think of TikTok as the next evolution in advertising where Facebook, because of political drama and whatnot, just forgot about or lost track. And that is creating vertical selfie style videos that are entertaining and engaging that also drive all three parts of the funnel. So yeah. our, our number one, our, our book on TikTok ads, number one in social media on Amazon. And that's because we're teaching concepts that were from 20 years ago, which is engage with people, share one tip, tell people about who you are, right? Tell people what you, they can buy from you and why they should. And it's literally taking things that you put as like a tweet or things you put as an ad and speaking them with your cell phone for 15 seconds. So this shift to TikTok isn't like, oh, I'm abandoning the Facebook train and let's do TikTok. TikTok's this new opportunity that was going to happen in the marketplace and Facebook just forgot to go there. Do you think Facebook will go there? They're trying to, but it's a little bit late, right? Facebook has historically been a fast follower. So you saw what they did to basically kill off Snapchat when they couldn't buy Snapchat is integrate a lot of the features that were there yeah. and that's what they did through Instagram. And what's happening on Instagram reels is their challenge to TikTok. It's not going that well because a lot of people are saying that this is just TikTok being ripped off and yeah. TikTok already being the world's number one website ahead of Google and the number one most downloaded app. It, you know, they, if Facebook did something about it two years ago, back when it was musically, back when ByteDance, the parent company was still trying to get stuff going, they would have had a shot, but TikTok's too big now. Yeah, they're definitely a, a beast in the marketplace. And I think another thing that's fascinating um, that I think a lot of the social platforms are going to have to uh, follow is how robust their algorithm is versus the other social algorithms. You know, uh, you said this on the front side, you talked about how, um, you know, social platforms are all about the end user. They're not about us as marketers. You know, they're all about giving the best experience, the best content. And what I find fascinating really is that, that TikTok, in my opinion, and I think you would agree, but I'd love your take on it. I feel like they are the best at aggregating content based on what we're looking at consistently. You know, yeah. I, I'm. it's fascinating. I, I'm seeing content in my TikTok feed that I'm like, I didn't, how, how's this here? But I, it's good. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad they found it yeah. for me. Uh, I just feel like it's so much pleasure. better. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Knows you better than yourself. Yeah. TikTok algorithm is faster at learning than all than YouTube or Amazon or Spotify or Facebook because it uses image recognition. Mm. So I can see the books that are in the background there. And if I'm TikTok, I'm going to find other people that maybe have read that book, or maybe you have the Eiffel Tower behind you like I did yesterday. And it's going to show it to other people who've been at the Eiffel Tower. It's going to show it to people that are in, it's doing facial recognition. So TikTok's very good at picking up what's in the video, not just who's engaging on the video and showing to other people who are similar to people who've engaged, but actually what's in the video content itself. Wow. I did not know that. That is fascinating. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So, um, you know, there's this whole drama around, you know, China, don't download it, blah, blah, blah. Uh I mean, has that gone away? It was a political thing and it always has been. I mean, the same was true 25 years ago with Bill Gates and Microsoft 
And all these, look, the point is, there's a lot of being, a lot of data being collected by all the social networks. And whether you're worried about the Chinese government or the US government, or, you know, don't be evil, that information is still being collected. So if you're concerned about your privacy, then it's, don't it's use the late. internet. Right? <laughs> it's too yeah. late, right? I mean, we it, don't. I think it came out, what was it, the Brave browser or one of these guys that claims to be privacy safe was actually selling their data to Microsoft, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's selling their, look, I ran the analytics at Yahoo 20 years ago as a search engine. And we had requests from the federal government where they said, hey, this person looks like a terrorist. Can you give us all their email? Can you give us everything they searched on? Can you give us their dating profile? Can you give us everything across the network? And we had to comply. Right, right. So I'm an American working at an American company and I have to give up the data. So yeah. I'm not that concerned with, you know, and it's not like the Chinese are going through all the TikTok data because it's, you know, their response is it's on American servers. Therefore, it's not separate from the Chinese government, even though TikTok is owned by ByteDance, which is a Chinese company. And we can go round and round on that, but it's it was right. political. Just like two years ago when Donald Trump said he was going to shut down TikTok, but then one of his buddies, you know, paid some money or TikTok paid some money and Oracle put some money in. And like it, it's all just politics and money. Yeah. And at the, at the end of the day, um, I really do believe that there is no such thing as privacy anymore. You know, if we're out there at all, if we are using the Internet anywhere um, there where people are collecting data on us, it's just I mean, even driving down the road, there's cameras. Right. I mean, there's yeah. there is no such thing as total privacy. Any, you anymore. have an iPhone or you have a phone in your house. And maybe you have an Alexa. Yes. And that thing's always listening. It's in your yep. kitchen or whatever. And it's listening. Sometimes it wakes up accidentally and it orders stuff for you or whatnot, right? So there's yeah. no getting around this. There's you know, no getting you know, around it. Doorbell camera, it's listening. Yeah. So do you think that businesses, um, you know, like, for, well, I, I'll ask it from the perspective of what I hear a lot of people say. A lot of people are like, well, you know, TikTok's not where my person is going to be. So my question is, are the Gen Xers and the baby boomers on TikTok? I mean, I'm there. So, I mean, but are you seeing an uptick? What's the biggest? Maybe that's a better question is what's the biggest age demographic that you are seeing um, as, you know, through your journey on TikTok? 40 plus is the fastest growing de- de- demographic because what we say is TikTok in 2022 is Facebook in 2007. Because what were people saying about Facebook in 2007? It's just kids. It's not for me. It's not serious. And now it's everybody. But TikTok has gone up that curve even faster. And so 40 plus is the fastest demographic. We have folks who are selling life insurance and retirement products to people that are turning 65 using TikTok ads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can reach everybody now on TikTok. It used to be kids, girls that were singing and dancing, but now it's everybody. And it's especially for professionals mm. and business owners. So real estate agents, mortgage brokers, doctors, people who have expertise. And mm. what we teach is if you have some, you know, some tip, literally make a 15 second selfie with that tip. And that's your TikTok. You don't have to sing and dance. Yeah, and which is, working. I think that's the pushback for so many people. It's like, yeah, I ain't doing that. So, it, you know, my content wouldn't be good there. But I I know so many people who I would call it talking head content, you know, yeah. where they're just delivering great content yeah. and no fancy uh, filters, no, oh. you know, no dancing. Unedited. Just, yeah, just unedited, just, just you know, quick yeah. information. And they're just rocking it um, on yeah. TikTok. So, I think that's uh, powerful. When it comes to TikTok ads, though, um, do you is it like Facebook where you have to have a business account um, in order to run ads? Yes, you do. There's a business center, which is like Facebook. And the TikTok team even told me they intentionally copied what Facebook was doing. Okay. So they're, they're a fast follower and they add these other features. One of the key differences with TikTok is that you don't have to have a TikTok account to run TikTok ads. Mm. because you can boost other people's posts. So TikTok, when they started building ads, they said, hmm, what's the biggest challenge with TikTok ads? Well, it's getting businesses to make their own videos. Mm -hmm. So why not have businesses get with their top clients, their employees, creators, 
the partners to be able to make videos and then boost those videos, right? Because let's say, you know, maybe uh, I'm a customer of, of one of your courses, right? Or one of your programs. Wouldn't it be so much better if you had a video of me talking about how awesome Kim Garst is, and then you boosted that post from my profile rather than you talking about your stuff? I think the fundamental problem with social advertising in general, which TikTok solves, is they know that if you talk about yourself, you're kind of a self-promoting douchebag. So if you can get other people to make those 15 second stories about you, your customers, your employees, I just had a call 30 minutes ago with an, an Atlanta limo company. So they have, you know, limos for corporate events and weddings and bachelor parties. And he was trying to make his own stuff. And I said, you need to highlight, you know, this girl where she's out on the town or this corporate, this conference, or here's a really cool restaurant or celebrating these moments in people's lives. and that's what you're going to promote. And that's what it, so when you show someone who's having a wedding, that's good. TikTok is going to show that to other people who are having a wedding. Because don't you think TikTok can figure out who's in the process of planning a wedding and choosing a caterer and choosing a venue and choosing a limo and just let the algorithm do the work for you, but you have to feed it the right thing, which is collecting your customer feedback. Because whatever you show, TikTok's going to find more people like that. Mm, so why not so their posts, right? Like, yeah. you know, Facebook allows us through the branded content tool to boost yeah. other people's posts, but how many people even know that or even know, or can even do that? And, ha- and how hard do they make it to do? It's so difficult. It's, hard. it's all it's the business easy. manager stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's impossible. It's like they put a barbed wire fence around it, but did you know? So spark ads is when you can boost someone else's post on TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. I asked TikTok recently, what percent of TikTok's revenue is coming from Spark Ads. Mm, what was it? I'm just curious. Wow. So what does that mean? It means that they figured this out in a big way. But why? But why is that? But why is that so important? This is the crux of the whole well, thing about TikTok. A, ads. It just, I think it's just again goes back to nobody. Nobody cares about what we say about ourselves. I mean, user-generated content has always been so powerful, but it's been mm-hmm. hard to gather. It's been hard to advertise. That's right. the big thing. It's been hard to, like, you know, somebody uses a hashtag or whatever and mentions our yeah. company or our brand. Okay, yeah. but how do we, we have to get permission. We have, to, you know, it's it's a rigmarole, yeah. right? So it's- You know how to do it on, on TikTok? Well, you know how easy it is to do it on TikTok? How All easy? you need is the ad code. So check this out. So here, mm-hmm. if I go to TikTok and I go to any TikTok that I've made, mm-hmm. so here I'm logging into TikTok mm-hmm. and I go, go to my profile, I'll go to one of these videos that I've made. I've got a ton of these, right? This is a monkey that, that uh, slapped me when I was in Pakistan. <laughs> but I click on the triple dots and I go over to the ad settings on the bottom here, ad settings. Then I authorize it, click the add authorization. And now all of a sudden, I can generate a code. See that? Generate code. Wow. Generate code. I choose the number of days I want this to live for. Seven days, 30 days, 60 days, and 365. Wow. Authorize. And now this code here, anyone who has this code, I I can give this to anyone. And they can run ads against that TikTok post that I made. That's that's amazing. That is that's so good. It. So if I have influencers, if I have customers, if I have partners, if I have employees, mm-hmm. and if they have a TikTok account, they can make a TikTok about whatever. Or I can, you know what I could do is maybe it's just like you know, people that leave Yelp reviews or whatever. If I find anyone that said something about me on TikTok that I like, mm-hmm. I can reach out to them saying, Hey Kim, that TikTok that you made, that this particular post, I would love to promote your post and put my dollars to promote you. Mm-hmm. How would you like that? Go in there, generate the code, give it to me, and then I'm going to run ads against your post. And at any point, you could you know, disable the code if you want to, right? Yeah. You don't have to give me access to your analytics. You don't have to give me access to your business manager. Like you're giving me access to just that one post. I mean, who's not going to, I mean, who's going to say no to that? I mean, it's- Isn't it's, that the most elegant yes. solution to UGC? Yes. You, you just, it's always been the elephant in the room when it comes mm-hmm. to social media advertising and just absolutely the business owners suck so bad mm-hmm. at producing their own content, right? It's and you're so never bad. like YouTube has tried to solve this problem. Facebook's tried to solve the problem. 
by forcing people to become YouTubers or podcasters or on personality camera people. But if a business owner, like, and let's say they're really good at accounting, they're really good at limo driving, they're really good at real estate or like whatever it is, but they just don't want to do video. Are you really going to be able to drive them kicking and screaming into making videos like you and I make videos? No. The, and then, so they're going to miss out, which gives, right. this gives them a whole other layer of opportunity. I love it. So you've mentioned spark ads. What, um, like obviously on Facebook, there's different types of ads, right? So what right. are some of the advertising options that TikTok has? Do they, they have all have, the same ones. Are they all, so they're so all they the same. Awareness, consideration and conversion. Okay. Use objections within. But the thing that's the hottest right now is the lead ad. So the yes. TikTok lead ad mm -hmm. is exactly like a Facebook lead ad. So if you've run a Facebook lead ad, mm -hmm. you're going to be very familiar with exactly how the steps work because it's an instant form that fills out with your name and email and phone and whatever else you want to collect with optional questions. And then you collect that email with the integration for your HubSpot or Infusionsoft or MailChimp or whatever it is. And you generate leads at a third the cost, maybe even a fifth the cost of Facebook. Why? Because the, cost, the base cost of traffic is about a third the price. You're getting a 50% form completion rate with instant, right? The instant form auto-populates auto the name and email address, right? And then the system's able to optimize just as well as Facebook because it is going to seek, it uses opt, uh, OCPM, which is optimizing whatever objective you choose. So it's optimizing to within your area, within like, you don't even have to do any targeting. The system will find who is most likely to convert. So if you have good creative in your lead ad and you have good automatic email follow-up, not manual follow-up, but integrated with your HubSpot, MailChimp, whatever, where you send them that email right away or books an appointment or like whatever the thing is where you follow up right away, clear value proposition, clear offer. We've seen like chiropractors, I think we're like $17 a, a lead, which is like $35 a book call, which is with a lifetime value of $2,500. Like the math works well. I've seen it work for pastors. I've seen it work for real estate agents. Basically, the, the lead ads work super well for professional services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll I work for imagine. courses too. It'll work for lots of things. That's fascinating. Um what kind of um, targeting is available? Is it as is it as rich as uh, Facebook? No, so they they took away TikTok took away a lot of the targeting because a the GDPR we knew the detail targeting was going to die anyway. So mm -hmm. Facebook's still in the process of killing detail targeting, but it basically died three years ago. So everything has to run broad targeting, right? Okay. If you're a local business, then you're going to target people just in your city. So maybe you're a real estate agent in San Diego, you're going to target just San Diego. And legally, because of you know privacy and whatnot, you can't target by age or gender or zip code or you know whatever it is. So you have to let the system optimize for you based on your content. So okay. the main thing with TikTok is if you're a local business, you can target down to the city or DMA. If you spend enough money, you get down to the city. You can do retargeting, which is email and web pixels, but that's starting to go away because of Google Chrome and IDFA and those kinds of things. And then three, I think this, this may become something, but will probably die, is hashtag targeting. Mm. But the, the volumes on that are really low. And the fourth thing technically, but I think it's garbage, is interest targeting. So all the common categories of like, you know, athletics and comedy and entertainment and knitting and travel and like those those kinds of categories you see there, but they're so broad that unless you're like a publisher or a media company, it's not going to because your your content's going to do the targeting for you anyway, so you don't need to choose a subcategory. So what I'm hearing you say is you just really need to let the algorithm. It's super smart. Let the algorithm do the targeting for you. It's all on your content. Everything's yeah. on your content. It's, Fascinating. Think of TikTok as the ultimate, you know, vending machine or like a Keurig machine or whatever it is where it's what you put into the machine and then you press the button, mm. right? Okay. All, like the machine's so smart. You just have to put, the, put whatever the thing is, press the button and it does everything else. Don't try to like mess with the rest of the details. Okay. So is there a minimum amount that you have to spend on TikTok? $20 a day. So we don't have the dollar a day yet. Okay. So $20 a day. And I think they're going to reduce it over time. 
but they they want to they want advertisers to gather enough data. Like we were able to do dollar day on Facebook for the longest time, and we still can for boosting posts because we're just trying to drive engagement in a small city. But TikTok's trying to force advertisers to get enough data that they can start to convert. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So if you don't have a real business, then maybe fifty dollars, you know, maybe twenty dollars a day seems like a lot of money. But if you have a creative or a set of creatives that you know already work because of the theme behind it, because you know who your target customer is, because you have feedback from people that love you, customers that love you, then it's very little risk on the creative side. You're just choosing between different variations of those videos. Yeah. And honestly, you know, I think one of the, the drawbacks of social media is it's, it's, um, given business owners an out on advertising their businesses. They've stopped advertising, you know, because they think social media is going to be their silver bullet. There's never been a business anywhere where we didn't have to advertise. We've got to get back to it, you know? Uh, so I think there's a lot of folks who are reluctant, you know, to spend money on ads, but um, yeah. yeah, I think it's just, and if you can, not that's like 600 bucks a month. If you're not spending 600 bucks a month advertising your business, you probably should be right. <laughs> so um, it's just an amplifier of what's already working, right? If you don't have a business going on to Facebook and TikTok and YouTube is not going to matter. Mm -hmm. But if you have a business where it's a clear value proposition and there's a clear signal to, you know, we've been teaching how to set up Google Tag Manager for years. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, your pixel, the conversion tracking, UTM parameters, all that kind of stuff. So if you have your data and your, your tracking set up, and even before you run TikTok ads, but if you can feed the TikTok, just, just like with Facebook, you can feed those conversion events, then the system can find more people that are just like that. But if you're not getting... 50 people to buy or schedule a call or whatever the thing is, you can't get 50 people per week doing the thing that you want. It doesn't matter whether it's Google or Facebook or TikTok. The system doesn't have enough data mm -hmm. to find other people that are like that. Yeah. But if you right. do, if you do have at least 50 people filling up the form, making the call, making the purchase, like whatever it is, you're going to find TikTok is amazing because it's going to turn every dollar into like another $3 or $5. But the biggest problem with people coming on the TikTok is they don't have an existing business because they think they're just going to go viral or whatever. Yeah. How ridiculous. You have to come into social media with an existing business. You have to actually have a real business, a business strategy, and then social media is throwing fuel on the fire. That's the way we exactly. look at it. So people say, well, what about Facebook or TikTok or LinkedIn? Or, and I'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa. First, do you have a business? Right, mm -hmm. Kim, that's the question we always we always start with. What's, what's your actual business? And then let's try to get more out of it through social networks, yeah. right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So are there any analytics? I mean, what kind of, what's their analytics look like um, on the backside? <laughs> but you're I'm not going to use TikTok's analytics. You're going to use your own analytics. So if you have all your event tracking in, in, yeah. in Google Analytics mm -hmm. or Infusionsoft, or whatever your point of sale, your Shopify, like whatever your point of sale is, that's what you're going to track your analytics in. You're going to use TikTok's analytics to see how the ads are performing and be able to optimize the ads. But the data that you see in the ads on clicks and conversions and sales and whatever is not going to align, which shows up in your, we like to have everything tied to Google Analytics, but it can be like whatever system you want. But these two systems don't tie. Because 30 to 40% of the data is being dropped because of, you know, iPhones, IDFA, Right, the iOS 14 thing, Google's killing the cookies in Chrome later this year. There's lots of things that are happening. There's different tools that will help you kind of bridge the analytics, like Triple Whale for e-commerce or Hyros for kind of lead gen, high ticket course seller people. Mm -hmm. There's Wicked reports. That, there's a bunch of these guys that basically will tie a UTM parameter. So, you know, you can put UTM parameters in, in your ads yes. to a first party cookie. So you can track more of those people through. And yes, that will give you an extra 30% more reported conversions, which then help the, helps the system optimize more towards conversions. So that's true, but it ignores what I believe is the most important part of social media, which is the pass along effect, which is word of mouth. Yeah. So let's say, you know, Kim, you tell me about, or let, let, you know, I'm going to the Taj Mahal in a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And I tell you about how awesome that is in a Zoom call. There's no cookie pixel transfer of that data. There's no UTM parameter from my lips to your lips, Kim. 
So then maybe in a year from now, you decide to go to the Taj Mahal. There's no tracking, no amount of pixel data UTM is going to track real right. word of mouth. And yeah, agreed. you and I, because we've been in this game such a long time, we know that it is not a trick or a hack, but I believe the core to almost every single business is word of mouth where you have happy customers that talk about you. And even with all the tracking in the world, you're not going to be able to track all that. You can track any individual's journey as it goes from their laptop to their phone, to their iPad, across that one person. But the whole point of word of mouth is the message goes from one person to another person. When that when that skip happens, you can't track that. Right, right. Unless you're an affiliate, but you know that's like 2% of all the sales out there through affiliate. And the reality too is that there are so many lurkers that see things in social media that they make buying decisions based on somebody's recommendation or somebody's story about some somewhere they visited or some product they've used or something they purchased that they love. And there's no touch point for that. No way to track that at all. Um, right. And and yet that's one of the things that I think um, is probably the easiest way for us to get sales. Yeah. But Yet, you know, we don't we don't even allow ourselves to consider that because we can't see it. We can't track it. We can't. There's no way for us to touch it. You know, it's always been that way. So before yeah. there was the Internet, there were maybe things like TV mm-hmm. and radio and just general word of mouth. And like I knew when I was at Yahoo 20 years ago and we did things like billboards to promote mm-hmm. things like Yahoo personals and sign up for a dating site and find a wife, that kind of thing. And we knew that if we ran billboards in L.A., that we would get more people coming to the site that came from LA. Like I would see it in our analytics, but I had no way of determining that it was from a billboard because I didn't have a tracking code. Right. And But I could see, so that shows up in analytics in a category called unattributed or a direct none, right? So if you look at your Google analytics and you look at the source medium report and you look at direct none, that's a measure of your brand power. If you have a lot of people that are coming in on direct none, that's from general word of mouth. That's from maybe you ran a Super Bowl ad. Maybe you had a, a flyer. But that that plus branded search terms is the true power of it. Like if those two are strong, then you're going to kill it on TikTok. Yeah. That means and that's, there's enough there's signal going on there, right? Yeah. I'm, I haven't started yet, but I am very intrigued. And um, a lot of people are telling me, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to get over there. And so um, I've been dragging my heels a little bit. I'm not exactly sure why, but so, you know, like a lot of things, um, and you mentioned it, we've been around a long time. We've seen a lot of things come and go, you know, yeah. Yahoo used to be the search engine, right? Now Google's Never. the elephant in the room. Um, yeah. But what do you think as it comes, when it comes to TikTok, do you think they have a huge lifespan or are they a flash in the pan? I am always careful about declaring a winner yeah. because every year or so there's a new thing that comes up and you know the likelihood of that new social network even though people are like yeah clubhouse or whatever yeah, right <laughs> it's dead right it's dead but tiktok has crossed that point where it is not a fad mm-hmm. and it's here to stay because it is the ultimate word of mouth engine it is the ultimate video know who your secret guilty pleasures are algorithm it is built, they have been very smart and they built upon all the things that work for Google and Facebook. Mm-hmm. So there's the, there's, you know, the idea of feeding the news, which is what Facebook has created based on the news feed. This news feed on TikTok, which is called the For You page, is so addictive because it learns what you like. It's taking in all these video signals. There's way more data in the video signals than there are in people's search behavior. Because it's, you know, you play it again, or how long did you watch the thing? And did you pause for a second? Like every one of those things they're taking, there's just way more rich data and looking at video behavior. So TikTok is learning faster. And YouTube, of course, is trying to get into the game, but they don't have the platform to do that. They tried that with YouTube Shorts. Google still, of course, has search. TikTok, I think, is never going to get the search. But you saw TikTok even trying to go into long form video, but to compete against YouTube. Will that work or not? I don't know. I mean, right now they have the hot hand, but TikTok is not like for the first year or so. So I've been doing this for doing this for three years on TikTok. I thought this is another fad. I just felt this fatigue. It's like I don't want to learn another social network. I don't have time. I'm already, you know, whatever. I felt like I'm an old person where I just I don't get it. But 
I've come to realize it's actually a lot of fun. And yeah. then here's my little secret tip. I'm actually almost never on TikTok, but what I am doing, and this is what, this is what folks like you and I who are more seasoned will appreciate. Mm-hmm. I care about people a lot and I spend a lot of time with people that I like. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is like earlier today, I was with one of the top entrepreneurs here interviewing him and proof right here on my phone. Mm-hmm. And we sat down for a whole interview and he even was holding up a copy of my best selling book. And this is just recorded on my phone. Yeah. But this, all these videos on the phone here are going into it because it's on my phone. I don't have to upload anything. It's just automatically happening with Apple. It's automatically uploaded to Google and Amazon because I pay 10 bucks a month for each of these automatically. But I have a team of virtual assistants that pull all the stuff that's happening on my phone and they cut them up and edit them and turn them into YouTubes and TikToks and Facebooks and blog posts and, you know, Twitters and all of these different things. So I don't have time for any of that. I don't want to be on TikTok. I don't want to learn about the latest changes on Instagram. I, I, all I do is I interview people and collect. I'm just like a honeybee collecting their knowledge. And then I'm holding people in what I call the content factory. Mm -hmm. But they're using 10 different tools, my favorite being Descript, but there's all these other tools to chop it up and then put it into the format that TikTok likes, yes. into the format that Facebook likes, the format yeah. that WordPress and you know Google and YouTube. So you can take one video, like our video here, Kim, you can take this one video and you can chop it up and turn it into 916 format that works on TikTok and 15 second highlights. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's, I, I have I think no that's channel that- overwhelm. We and all we need to under, understand is that the, if we have video content, we just need to go back to that. We don't yeah. have to start fresh, you know. Uh, I think everybody thinks they have to do the latest and greatest. And when we have a, I have so much stinking content. I could do this for days. I love that you, you have the content, that. but do you have a content factory? You need a content factory of the yes. VA, of the software, yes. and the process. Yes, but yes. I was in Pakistan we, for the last two weeks. And we can hire these people that are trained in our processes. They work super hard, college educated, speak good English. Guess how much per month full time? Oh, probably six hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. And That's I feel awesome. like everybody needs to have their own content VA just Absolutely. to profit their content because it's easy to interview somebody on Zoom and ask them questions and be all nice. But like Kim, do you want to edit your own videos and chop them up and put them no. in TikTok and all? No, no. I mean, my team does it. I mean, you right. know, but I don't want to do it. But a lot of people think you have to hire, have an agency and all this. No, you just hire one of these folks for 500 bucks a month. So, you know, I have the number one bestselling book in social media right now on Amazon. I think that's amazing. Okay. In fact, we're going to be giving away a couple of those on um, on the show. So I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah. But let me tell you a secret, which ties into this whole TikTok thing. So I wrote, you know how I wrote this book? How did you, you probably just, I don't know. Tell me. It's what I just told you. Yeah. So you record it. I've been recording looms and zooms while I'm just sitting there in the TikTok interface, making ads. Yeah. I have like 50 hours of me just like clicking around, messing around, making ads, finding what's working, what's not working. I'm interviewing other people on zoom who have done like, anytime I see someone who's done, some, who's, who's been successful on TikTok ads, I'm like, let's hop on Zoom. And then I'm going to put you in my book. So I've, I've interviewed so many people. Yeah. And then we take that, the team takes that and they transcribe it. They pull out the highlights. They do the research and, you know, the, they had like figuring out the stats for the footnotes and that kind of citations. And, and the book was written off of all the stuff that yeah. I created. So all I did was just interview a bunch of people. But technically, I wrote the book. It wasn't ghostwritten because yeah. it's yeah. still all the content that me and yeah. these other people did. Right. I think that's fabulous. Yeah. But that's how you get big on TikTok. And yeah. I've talked to the biggest TikTokers and there's something about creating native content and all that kind of stuff. But the, the TikTokers I know who are doing really well as business professionals, mm-hmm. where they're actually an expert in something, they're an author, they're a doctor, they're, they're not a young girl who's like dancing and, or some athlete doing some crazy athletic feat, but just a regular human who's speaking expertise to their phone. That's what they're doing. All the people I know, they have a team of two or three people, usually virtual assistants in the Philippines or India or someplace like that. And that's how they get their content out. The top YouTubers, they know this because the YouTube folks know that they need to have a team because they don't want to edit their own videos. Yeah. So they can take a couple people on their team to understand how to tune that same content 
snippets. We think of them as movie trailers, like the YouTube podcast where that's the movie, the snippet on TikTok's the movie trailer. And then we have a team that just cuts out everybody. I know they have a team that just cuts out the highlights and puts yeah. those on TikTok because yeah. TikTok not there to full, fully teach you. It's there just to get you excited. And then you want to go to YouTube and watch the whole thing, or then you want to go to the blog and then read the whole thing. Yeah. I love it. That's so, how I'm thinking about TikTok, right? Yeah, that's a good, that's, I love that. And because I think a lot of people are scared about like, what's this going to require? You know, how much content am I going to have to create for this? And it gets so uh, already a little bit crazy. The biggest thing <clears throat> is you've got to get your, because it's UGC at scale, you've got to get your, if you're a solo business owner, then you have to collect feedback from all your clients, yeah. which if you're already talking to them on Zoom calls and you're already recording the calls, then Great. You already have it. If mm-hmm. you have a team of people like my friend, uh, Tommy Mello is the world's, I think is the world's largest home services business. So he's got all these trucks that go around and repair garage doors and stuff like that. So when his technicians install a new garage door, they'll say, Hey, Kim, how is your garage door? And you say, Oh, it's really great. I love it. It looks beautiful. Awesome. Can we make a little video about that where I ask you? And then we make a little video. So now he's got, he's turned all his technicians and all the people driving around those vans with garage doors or whatever, he's turned all of them into content collectors because yes. he's built a whole process and he has the five questions to ask mm-hmm. each of these customers, which is Todd Herman's five questions. And now all this stuff is coming into his content factory and turning those into ads. So great. That is so great. So what do you think, like a lot of, we talked about this just briefly, but um Obviously, a lot of the uh, social platforms have tried to adopt or copy, steal, whatever, um, what uh, TikTok is doing. You know, we have Reels, we have YouTube Shorts, you know, even uh, obviously even stories, short form content is on all the socials now. So do you think that TikTok will continue to be the leader in um, new features that other socials will ultimately end up copying? Or what do you foresee? I think they will. Yeah. For a few years. But, you know, Kim, you and I have seen this. Every few years, there's another cool social network. Mm -hmm. Because in five years, TikTok's going to be so big. It's already so big. People are like, oh, my mom's on TikTok. So the minute your mom's on TikTok, there needs to be some cool new social network that the cool kids are on. Yeah, right. So true. true. I, I expect TikTok to be like Yahoo or AOL or Google or Microsoft. I mean, this is... I have seen, I've been doing digital marketing for over 30 years. Mm-hmm. It absolutely is the same pattern. History keeps repeating itself. Yep. TikTok is the hottest thing right now. And it'll build build the next layer because, you know, the, the, all these things you read about, like the four horsemen, for example, all, there's all these layers that are built on top. There will be another layer past TikTok. What will it be? I don't know. Maybe something with Elon Musk's, you know, Neuralink or some some <laughs> kind of like brain invasive thing where you just think it instead of like actually having to speak it. Who knows? Right. Yeah. But there will be something else. Yeah, definitely. Well, I am so blessed that you just said yes to coming and sharing your wisdom. Um, what I'll do, we were planning, I'm going to, I'll do the recording on the front side of this. Um, so, cause this is obviously not live, but we'll, we'll um, play it live. You know, when we go. Um, Say hi, we got somebody here who's like trying to bother me. Say hi. Hey. On the Say your name and who you are. Yeah. Good Fantastic. All right. So we're doing a lot of live podcast right now. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So real, let me uh, ask you real quick. Is there anything I can do for you? I believe that we should practice what we preach, especially you and I. I consider you and I like senior statesmen. Yeah, in we're community. definitely OGs in the space, are we? <laughs> in, in a good way. I don't want to say we're old, right? <laughs> I was with Noah Brierly, who's got 6 million followers on TikTok. I was interviewing him. Perry and I were interviewing him about for this TikTok thing. Mm-hmm. And he was saying something, I think he meant it as a compliment. He said something like, you guys are doing well for old people like you. <laughs> I'm like, what? Wait a minute. I'm, I'm now that old person? Yeah. But he was saying that it was, it's tough for people who are over 30 to make a 15 second selfie video because we suffer from what's called the rambling old man syndrome. Have you heard this? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And you make your point in 15 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah. And so what I want to do is I want to honor these people who are doing really well, practice what we preach. And the thing that I've been doing 
is taking our videos, taking these interviews, chopping them up into pieces, turning them into blog posts, turning them into Instagram stories, Mm -hmm. turning them into like little tweets where we have the highlights. Mm -hmm. And so if you practice, if you do this, which I know you do, but Mm -hmm. if you you honor it, and I'll give you all our training on how to do this. I know you've got a team, so your team can implement all this. Like we've built out this whole factory, right? Okay. That would be the best thing you could do for me, right? I the will do it. Days. And I will credit you and I will talk about it. And and I would and I'll love feature to know, you, right? And I'll say, look at what Kim's doing. Yeah. I would love to know if you um do you um is it a service that you offer for the five hundred dollar person? Like if 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 I know people who need a five hundred dollar um team member, can yeah. can I come to you for that? Yes, you can. I'm on that. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that was something you did. So I'm like, okay, well, that's in the last 10 years, I've shifted from running an agency mm-hmm. to creating jobs. And know. our mission is, is to create a million social media jobs. Right. Mainly international people. And we're a quarter of the way there. That's so Isn't awesome. That crazy. Yeah. yeah. Most this of my is team split. is in the Philippines and they are incredible. I love mm-hmm. my people, love them. And five hundred dollars a month is life changing money over there. Yes, and they will work super hard. Yeah, and this is not taking advantage of exploiting third world labor or whatever it is. Like I've been hated on for saying, you know, you're taking away jobs from America. I said I was born in Dayton, Ohio. Right. I'm as American as all the rest of you guys are. Yeah, but there's things that are worth more than two dollars an hour for my time. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. the way for me to grow is the more people I can hire the more I can focus on things that are actually the best use of my time. Yeah. Amen. So for everybody, we, so we coach a thousand agencies, right? And each of these agency owners, they're busy trying to take care of the clients and do the PPC and SEO and video editing. And like, you know, God bless you I to know. try to do all those different things. Yep. But I think for every waiter, there have to be three cooks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Imagine if a waiter, which is like you and I, tries to go we go into the kitchen we're going to cut our fingers we're going to burn ourselves yeah but that's not our zone of genius <laughs> you have people in the kitchen they're chopping vegetables they're washing plates they're like doing all the stuff in the kitchen and they're yeah. good at it right because they follow the recipe yeah. they're well trained but those folks on your team do you think that if they came out and tried to become a waiter what would happen right it just it wouldn't be right mm-hmm. it's not their thing it wouldn't be the we same yeah. the thing that we're good at yeah yeah, absolutely. So I, I think agree. all of our friends who are waiters, like, or maybe they, they've got this idea that you could be a Superman, that you as the agency owner or business person, you could do it all. That's a lie, right? Mm-hmm. Let's do the mm-hmm. thing that we're good absolutely. at and then have other people that are properly trained and qualified who are happy to do this work for $500 a month. I was in Pakistan a week ago and speaking at some of these conferences, I remember raising my hand one time saying, who would like to have a job making $500 a month? And these mm-hmm. kids are going to school, they're studying, they're going through our training. Like almost every hand in the room went up. Right. Easily. Yes, this is like not like some to, summer I mean, job at McDonald's, right? And McDonald's, yeah. they, they're paying $20 an hour now at McDonald's. And people and still want to up to work. And they still don't want to work. It's just bizarre. And, and these are like, I hired three people just this week from Pakistan at $250 a month. That's $8 a day. That's incredible. Kim, what would you do for if I paid you eight dollars a day? What would you be willing to do for me? Uh, right, not much, right? I mean, <laughs> we are these people so are going to work the whole here. day for you, right? Yeah. They're eager, they're happy, they're hardworking. I mean, yeah, why not, That's right? Incredible. Then there's two hundred fifty million of them in Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Our, our group, onlinejobs.ph, and in the Philippines, we have two million VAs in the Philippines. Yeah. It's it's amazing. My folks are. I'm I'm so blessed to have my team. Yeah. Uh, their family, really. I mean, yeah, you know, they've been with me for so long. Um, but I love them. I'm I'm so. And they're they're um, the word that comes to mind most frequently when I think of them is humble. Humble. They're just so humble. Joyful, loyal. Yes. So they stay with you yes. for years. Yeah. Yeah. My top guy's been with me for eight years. Mm-hmm. I think he's making 1200 bucks a month now. He started at like 300 bucks a month, but still, it's great. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, now I know. So I will. Um, I'm excited. I'll have to. Um, I will have. I've got some people in mind already that I know may need you. So I'll have to send them your way. Yeah. Fantastic. And this All is right. great for everybody because the, the way we're going to scale our business 
it, like we're talking today about TikTok ads, but mm-hmm. we could be talking about YouTube or Facebook or blogs or like right. whatever. Yeah. Is we create the content and then everything else, 95% of the work has to happen in the factory, right? Mm-hmm. We do the 5%, which is we collect the content, we interview our friends, like we get on Zoom, that's mm-hmm. 5%. But that other 95% is not worth our time. So right. we need to hire people from the factory who are trained to be able to process all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, we That's will. We'll we'll put it together. Um, I mean, we we have a process, but you know, if you have something you'd rather, and would you like the content too? Would you like a copy of it? Yeah, because then okay. our team can work on it as well, and we'll have a fun little competition. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. That'll be fun. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Well, um, what I'll do is I'll send the um, I'll send the raw footage over to you, okay. and I'll just drop box link or something like that, yeah. and make it easy for you. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it, Kim. And then let's, let's, let's share across all the other channels, which is what we call repurposing. Yep. And let's find out you know, which of the, let's take the highlights that we think are the best. And then let's run dollar a day against it. Okay. And let's do which it. Ones we'll win, right? All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Dennis. You have a, and if you think of anything else I can do to help you, you just reach out. Okay. You're awesome, Kim. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, talk soon. Enjoy Bye. your trip. Taj Mahal, I'll make a video for you. Yeah, I can't wait to see the pictures. All right. (laughs) Bye. I'll see you.